Okay, never. Okay, sorry. The poisons are never intended to promote human health. Never intended for medicinal purposes. Okay, poison is substances that only used to, for example, other things. Okay, but for the human itself, it can cause harm. Right. So drugs can be poisons, but not vice versa. Okay, drugs can be poison, but not vice versa. Okay, drug is you take in huge amount. Okay, it can poison you, but poison. Okay, just in a least amount, okay, just a small amount, it can also cause harm to you. Okay, that is different between drugs and poisons. Okay, the next one is intoxicants, VS poisons. Okay, intoxicants uh, is actually used, okay, to give pleasure to human. Okay, for example, as alcohol. Alcohol requires you to ingest a rather large amount to be little. For example, if you consume alcohol, okay, uh, just one cup, so it may not cause harm to you. But if, for example, you take about 10 cups okay, in one hour, so it will maybe cause you some of the uh, poison symptom. Okay? So, but it poison is only require you to ingest a small amount, which is not intended at all for human benefit. Okay? So that's all about definitions uh, that we will learn today, I believe so. So, is there any question about a definition? Ada masalah tak about definisi? So, kita kena faham perbezaan antara drugs, poisons dan juga intoxicants. Okay? Even though all these three actually related to the forensic toxicology, but because of today we will focus on the poisons, so uh, it's better for us to understand the definitions. Okay, before we go in further, right? Okay, I also open the chat room in my other monitor, so you can always um, you can always chat if you have any question. Then I will try to help you. Right? Okay. Right. How toxicology related in forensic science? Okay, toxicology is related when we want we want to deal with drugs, poisons, or other toxic substances. Okay. So in 1775, okay, one of the chemists discovered that how to prove the use of arsenic okay, in the suspicious death, including the homicide and suicide. Okay, later on we will learn what is differences between the homicide, suicide, and all other kind of the manner of death. Right. So after that, the toxicology become more important. So toxicologists, okay. Uh, the job of toxicologists okay, need to be able to identify the compounds and to know their quantity as well. Okay, later on, we will learn about the role of the forensic toxicologist. Okay, you guys need to understand that because if, let's say, for example, you guys uh, learn or, sorry, you guys work in the real world okay, of the forensic science, okay, you need to understand the role very, uh, very deeply, right? Okay, how is forensically related? Okay, it can be suicide. Okay, it can be either poisoning case. Okay, maybe a homicide case. Sama ada case bunuh diri, case keracunan, sama ada accidental ataupun uh, sengaja, ataupun homicide. Case kasus, kasus pembunuhan, for example. Okay, right. Okay, there are few number of fields. Okay, a few number of fields is forensically related, including the forensic security, okay, consumer products, death examination, environmental, animal and agriculture. So I give you an example for food security, for example. Maybe in 1980s, uh, you, if you guys have heard about DDT pesticide, DDT, one of the, the uh, banned pesticide nowadays. Okay, in 1980s, widely used for agriculture. Okay, because of it cause harm to human, it's actually become a trait. Dia meng, mengancam kesal, keselamatan makanan. Okay, so that's why it's related to the food security. And it's also concerned about consumer products. Okay, it's also concerned about consumer products. For example, our lipstick. Okay, some, I think uh, we have heard about this. Uh, sometimes the lipstick, okay, they have the mercury instead of the lipstick. They have the mercury instead of the cosmetic product as the bleaching agents to make your skin is more white. OK, 
Okay, so it's related to consumer product. Death examination, either it's suicide or is that it is homicide. So it's uh, what we call related to the death examination. Okay, how about the environmental? For example, because of the mining, okay, uh, penggalian tanah. Okay, mungkin ada arsenic pollution. Okay, uh, inside of the water. So they will look into the uh, environmental aspect. Or maybe the the factory they release the poisonous gas into the air. So that's how it's related to environment. Same goes to edu uh, animal and agriculture. Uh, I think be I believe nowadays that including Indonesia also have banned uh, the paraquat. Paraquat is one of the uh, toxic pesticide, very harmful to human. Okay, have been banned uh, throughout the world. Most of the countries they already banned the paraquat. So it's actually related to animal and agriculture as well. Okay. Right, so next is, okay, you can read by yourself the divisions related to forensic uh, science, okay. We have a lot of number of here, toxicology, food quality, pharmaceutical, wildlife, agriculture, criminalistic, environmental quality, water quality, a lot of it, right. Next, okay, this kind of important, if you are forensic, uh, as the forensic pathologist, or maybe you as the forensic Toxicologists. There are two terms here: forensic pathologists and also forensic toxicologists. Okay, you need to work with each other to determine the manner of death, cara kematian, cara kematian. Contohnya, mangsa mati dibawa ke hospital. Okay, kita nak tahu cara kematian pesakit. There are five manner of death, which is the natural, accidental, suicidal, homicidal, and unknown. Okay, sekira -kira, sekiranya keempat-empat uh, cara kematian ini tidak dapat dikenal pasti. Okay, so we will determine the manner of death as unknown. Okay, sekiranya keempat-empat cara kematian ini tidak dapat dikenal pasti, only that we will apply the death manner of death as unknown. Okay, manner and manner of death and the cause of death is different thing, two different thing. Manner of death only these five okay for example the uh, the, the manner is natural okay the cause of death is the heart attack okay all right for example the manner of death is accidental the cause of death maybe because of the um the bleeding okay huge number of bleeding at the head of the victim okay suicidal okay because of poisoning okay this is the manner of death the cause of death because of the huge amount of Poison or pesticide inside of her blood, of his blood. Okay, so that is the difference between manner of and also the cause of death. Okay, right. So far, uh, all right. Sorry. So far, is there any question related to forensic? So I like that. Mega okay, Mega Bati. Okay, but right. I will try to do my best. Right, so in the manner of death, if the death is natural, okay, so we would like to know if the death is natural or is actually induced by something else. For example, in our topic today is poison. Is it by poison? Poison. If, for example, it's not natural, you detect poison inside of his blood, for example, you need to know that is it, for example, is it accidental or not? If it's accidental, is it is it by those mistakes? For example, uh, the doctor give the, uh, some mistake about the dosage of the uh, drugs. For example, is he missing or wrong prescription? Give a wrong prescription. For example, or bad mixing. Okay, inside of the drugs there are something else chemicals. Okay, bad mixing. Okay, then a uh, curious children maybe could you sebagai kanak kanak ingat uh, anak anak kecil ingat ni adalah chocolate then uh, you accidentally eat them. So that is uh, how, what is meant by accidental. Okay. Then suicidal is the most common if, for example, the, the victim itself taken the chemical knowingly and also uh, voluntarily. So that is what mean by suicidal. Okay. The most common poison including the carbon monoxide and also, for example, paraquat. Okay. Or also red pesticide. Okay. 
And also the main of this example is the homicidal when there's somebody else, somebody else, okay, use the poison, okay, intentionally to cause harm to the person with the intention to murder lah, with the intention of murder, right? Okay, so uh, for homicidal, it's uncommon today since uh, majorly if uh, they want to kill someone, they will just use the, the gun, for example. If they want to use uh, poison, okay, the killer usually need to know the habits, okay, so they can introduce the poison silently. For example, lah, for example, contohnya saya suka minum susu sebelum tidur pukul 11 malam. Okay, so mungkin uh, wife saya dia nampak saya curang, saya berlaku curang kepada, curang apa in Indonesia? Cheating. I'm cheating my wife. Okay, so my wife jealous and try to kill me. So she know that I drinking milk at 11.30 p.m. So he introduced the poison inside of my milk. Okay, so that is the example lah. How the uh, suspect can introduce the poison silently. Right. Then, okay, so that is... Uh, how it's related to the forensic science okay is there any question from from the students not yet sir not yet right good okay okay later we will have some activity okay later we will have some activity right make sure if you guys have any question please stop me anytime okay the next one Okay, now the role of forensic toxicologist. Okay, you need to imagine yourself as the toxic, uh, forensic toxicologist. What you need to know, okay? Or what you need to do, okay? Basically, you need to perform the scientific test. What is mean by scientific test? You need to do it scientifically. You cannot just do it uh, just, uh, just here and there, okay? Because it's require expertise. It's require you to perform it correctly. It's required to you perform it uh, accurately. Okay, right. So you need to provide the quality and quantitative analysis. Secara kualitas dan juga suara secara kuantitas. Okay, the analysis must be complete and accurate. Okay, accurate is mean that uh, there is no error. Okay, inside of your analysis. And then you also need to provide the interpretation of the results. Okay, you, do, you just not just prepare the data. You need to provide the interpretation. For example, okay. Later, we will learn about the LD50. LD50, we will learn about that. The amount that actually can cause harm to the human. Okay, so for example, you need to provide, you as the expert, you as an expert, you need to provide the interpretation, either the amount of the poison or pesticide, okay, that you found can cause harm or not, okay. So that is kind of the interpretation that you need to present, for example, during the testimony, okay. That's why in the end, okay, one of the role of the forensic toxicologist is you need to testify effectively. Why? Why you need to testify effectively? Uh, okay, I believe here is already we got the answer to assist the trial or the trial of fact in understanding. Okay, because uh, during in court, okay, the, the, the judge is not in the background of science. Okay, the lawyer or the prosecutor is doesn't have any science background. It's your job to make they understand the process or the data or the interpretation of the results. Okay, that's why you need to be able to testify effectively. Okay. If there is no question, I will proceed. Right, here is the example of poison. I will just go through fastly. Okay, but the, the most important thing that you want to understand that there are a few kind of the uh, type of drugs. Okay, few type of drug. For example, here is kind of the organic compound drug. Okay, right. So, for example, here, cyanide and also strychnine. Cyanide is very little. I think it's kind of famous, right? Very, uh, very little. Then you have the strychnine, one of the common, uh, commonly used poison for suicide. Okay, 
basically is the red poison, right? Then we have also corrosive chemical. Okay, corrosive chemical is made up of uh, uh, ions. Okay, usually ions because they are okay. They are made of ions. Okay, and then we also have the uh, carbon monoxide compound, and then you can also have heavy metal. So there are a few types. You have organic compound like this, and then you can also have ions. Okay, like the corrosive chemical. For example, you have uh, chloride ion. Okay, for example, like that. And then you have you can have the compound. Okay, and then you have also the heavy metals. Why you need to understand different types? Because later, when you want to choose the correct instrument, you want to choose the correct sample preparation, you need to understand what is the type of the poison. Is it heavy metal? Is it uh, organic compound? Is it is actually ions? So you need to understand what kind of, uh, what type of poisons or pesticides or toxicants, okay, you're dealing with, okay, right, so here is the other thing, insulin, okay, succinyl chloride, you can read by yourself, I don't want to go specific, okay, the most important thing that you understand the type of uh, pesticide, okay, or the, or the type of poison, okay, right, so here it's involved the pesticide as well, herbicide as well, okay, pesticide, uh, the differences between pesticide and herbicide, pesticide is used to uh, kill unwanted animals, herbicides to kill unwanted plants. Okay, the famous pesticide used uh, related to forensic is red poison. Herbicide, for example, paraquat, eh? paraquat uh, is widely, still widely used lah, uh, illegally. I believe in, in Indonesia as well, because in Malaysia, even though we have banned the paraquat, we can still be able to obtain the paraquat. Even Thailand also have banned the paraquat, but it's still widely been used. Okay, widely been used paraquat. Right, so that is about the example of poison. Okay, very simple. Just understand the types because later you need to understand the correct sample preparation or sample analytical method. Okay, here is the concentration categorized by toxicologists. Okay, there are four. The first is normal. Okay, normal is actually the found uh, the, the 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 amount of chemical. Okay, I, I refer to amount of chemical, not not specifically to poison. I refer to amount of chemical. The num, uh, the normal amount of chemical, okay, or substances, uh, is commonly found inside of your body. For example, the amount of iron inside of your body, okay, for example, is hundred ppm. Okay, it's normal. Okay. So that is normal, okay? Nothing wrong with that, okay? Then the second one is therapeutic. Therapeutic is the amount of the chemical or substances that doctor wants in your bloodstream to treat you, untuk merawat, okay? Contohnya, uh, he, uh, she want the amount of paracetamol inside of your uh, bloodstream is about uh, 5 milligram, okay? Per meal, okay, for example, so... If you follow that particular amount, so it's a therapeutic level, okay? Toxic, a level that may, may cause harm, okay? Harm, for example, you muntah-muntah, pening, dan sebagainya, okay? For example, you take five tablets of paracetamol at once, okay? So maybe it's, still, it's not lethal, not cause you to death, but it's toxic because it cause you to vomit, cause you to have a diarrhea, okay, and a lot of other things. And then number four is ladle. Ladle level, ladle is level which the toxin consistently cause death, which LD50, LD50. Okay. What is mean by LD50? Ladle is mean that if the amount of the chemical can cause death, lah, consistently cause death. Okay. Which means it's reach the LD50. Right. What is mean by LD50? For example, you have 10 rabbits. You have 10 rabbits. And then you feed them. You feed them. You beri makan. You beri makan those rabbit. Arnab itu, kelinci itu. Uh, dengan amount of poison yang sama. Okay. 50% of them die. Okay. 50%. Is, 5 daripada 10 ekor kelinci. 5 ekor mati. Bila you bagi that certain amount. Uh, same amount of poison. So that is one. Uh, what is mean by LD50. It means that the toxin. 
okay, at that level will cause 50% of population to die. Tested lah, tested population to die. There are wiggle room between categories. Everyone reacts differently based on age, sex, body size, genetics and health. For example, saya berat saya lebih kurang uh, 100 kilogram. My weight is about 100 kilogram. Okay, maybe I will take about four to five cups of alcohol before I will get intoxication ataupun saya mabuk daripada alcohol. Okay, sebab berat saya 100 kilogram. My weight is 100 kilogram. For example, Megawati, the weight is about 40 kilogram. Okay, so maybe she only need about one cup of alcohol uh, to get intoxication ataupun uh, mabuk. Okay, so there are differences between a lot of other factors. Okay, uh, kesihatan sebagainya, umur, usia. Okay, so a lot of factors. Okay, so is there an, any question about the concentration level? Okay, because we need to understand this. Eh? Bapak saya ingin bertanya. Ah, okay. Uh, saya bertanya. Ada soalan? Bukan cara, bukan cara kematian. Bukan cara, cara kematian. Misalkan, uh, saya dengan teman saya, ternyata saya ini mengidap serangan jantung. Nah, mm -hmm. saya itu meninggalnya uh, sebelum teman saya datang lagi. Uh, saya kena serangan jantung juga terus ada teman saya melihat saya terus ada yang lain yang tidak itu nah itu uh, mencara apa menentukan cara kematian bagaimana ya pak apakah nanti teman saya itu uh, bisa diindikasikan melakukan pembunuhan atau memang si uh, teman saya tadi itu uh, memang natural gitu cara kematiannya Jadi, Okay. Uh, saya mungkin tidak dapat dengar dengan jelas tapi bagaimana cara kematian lah cara kematian okay. uh, macam selalunya lah okay. uh, my brothers lah my brother my brother dia meninggal tahun ni uh, matilah mati meninggal dunia pada tahun ini disebabkan sakit jantung okay. Okay. so uh, di situ doktor dia akan tengok pada usia Okay. Macam contohnya, abang saya meninggal pada umur 38 tahun. Okay. Dia akan lihat, is, a com is, is it common okay, to a person die due to heart attack at before 40 years old? Okay. If the death is suspicious, okay, they will conduct, for example, several tests. Okay. They will operate uh, the lung, okay, for example. They need to look, okay, is it uh, because of heart attack? Okay, if there is nothing wrong, okay, they will look at the brain. Okay, is it because of stroke? Okay, if still not be able to uh, determine is the death caused by natural occurrence, okay, so they will take a uh, sample, toxicological sample, for example, the urine, blood, they will test for drugs. Okay, they will test for poisons. Okay, that's how actually they try to look uh, at it. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Is, is it answering your question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih. Sorry, sir. Uh, I have uh, one question. Okay, boleh. Uh, how if the someone kill, but the poison in the sample uh, is uh, so small, but ah. it, uh, but uh, the toxic is uh, so so toxic. How we can detect it uh, by the instrument? Right. Okay. Later we will learn about the sample preparation. Okay. We will reach into that. Okay. We will reach into that. Okay. If, for example, the poison is too small, ataupun I give you certain situation. For example, I at my room, I drink poison. Okay. And then I'm dead. Okay. Maybe after a week, they found my corpse. They found my dead body. Maybe after that, the poison level is already low. Okay. How we determine that? Okay. We will go into that later on. Eh? I will answer that question later. Okay. Right. Is there any question more? That's a very good question. Mm. Okay. Right. Right. So, there is... Uh, so, to... There is analytical procedure to analyze poison and also to analyze 
pesticide or other kind of uh, toxicant, for example, drugs. Okay, so you need to perform the sampling. Okay, the sampling must be correct so that you know that the sample, uh, the analyze, the chemical or the substances is there. If you take a uh, take the wrong sample, your chemical may not be found. So the sampling must be correct. Okay, then you need to perform the sample preservation. What it means by sample preservation? Is it means that we we don't want that your sample to get destroyed after certain period of time. We want to make it last longer. Okay, then you need to perform sample preparation. Okay. The sample preparation also is kind of answering the question by the person just now. I'm sorry because I cannot get your name just now. Okay. The correct sample preparation can help you to enhance the concentration. Okay. If, if for example, it's too diluted, it can help, help the analysis to enhance the concentration so it can be detected by the instrument. Okay. And then the fourth one is the analysis method. Okay. The, by choosing the correct analytical method, okay, by choosing the correct instrument, okay, different instrument they have different sensitivity level, okay, different instrument have different sensitivity level. For example, if you just using, if you just using UV vis spectroscopy, okay, UV vis spectroscopy, the detection level may be at only until ppm level, okay, the concentration cover is not that small okay but for example you use mass spectrometry you use mass spectrometry it can go up to part per trillion okay it can go trace level so these two these two actually very important to cover or to answer that particular question uh, for the trace analysis or the small amount analysis okay right so the last part of the analytical procedure or analysis procedure is to provide the evaluation. Okay, so is that answering your question? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I just confirmation. Uh, so the sample preparation is important, and uh, how we choose the instrument is uh, important. Important too, sir. Yeah, true. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Now let's know about your sample, okay? The points of administration, okay? Right, so by knowing the point of administration, okay, we will know, okay, which sample, okay, we should focus on, okay? By knowing the points of administration, okay, we can know which sample that we can focus on. For example here, if for example, the toxins, Either it's drugs, either it's poison, or it's kind of toxin you ingest. Okay, you ingest means that you take orally. Okay, you take orally, you makan, you minum. Okay, so it will it should sharp. Uh, sorry, it should show up more. Okay, in the stomach or intestine and also liver. Okay, so kalau kata dimakan, okay, kita kena fokus uh, sample. Uh, contohnya stomach content. Okay, interesting dan juga liver. Okay, if for example the toxin is inhaled, for example in the environmental pollution, okay, cause death. Okay, so you should focus the sample. Okay, that collected from lungs. Okay, if for example the uh, poison is injected through your skin, okay, you can look directly through the tissue around the point of injection. Okay. And the, the, the fourth one is intravenously. Intravenously is you dripping, dripping the, for example, the liquid inside of your bloodstream. So because if it's dripping inside of your bloodstream, you should focus more on the blood, blood sample, right? If, for example, right, the, the sample at uh, the point of administration is through dermal, maksudnya just sapu pada kulit. Dermal is mean on the kulit lah, on kulit. So just sapu. So we should focus more okay, uh, on the tissue area around the point of administration because it can be found more on that particular area. So we need to try to understand or try to know the points of administration. Okay. So best places for sample testing, okay, including the blood. Blood is 
uh, every time lah, every time if for example it's related to poison or toxicology analysis, they will take blood unless blood is not available. For example, for example, when blood is not available, for example, uh, the, the dead body is found after few days. Okay, the blood is clot already. Okay, so nothing that you can collect. There is no blood anymore. Okay, or maybe uh, it comes from infant babies. Okay, infant babies, the amount of blood is not that much. Okay, so they need to take something else. For example, liver tissue as well. Right. The second one is urine. Urine because the is easily be obtained, especially if the victim is still alive. Okay, so it is not um, intrusively. Intrusively is mean that you tak mencederakan. Okay, if you take blood, you need to perform the injection. You need to draw blood. You need to use needle. But urine is very easy. Okay, right. Then the third one is stomach contents. Right. The fourth one is liver. Okay. Why liver? Because most of the times, chemical will get concentrated in the liver. Okay, uh, the chemical, the substances will concentrate at the liver. At the liver, the metabolism process is occur. All right, is occurring at the liver. Okay, so if, for example, okay, you want to determine either you want to determine either the the victim is die immediately or die after long exposure of chemical you need to test the liver okay because for example if uh sorry by by okay you need to test both in the liver and by by ni hempedu lah hempedu okay let's say the victim die immediately after taken the poison after taken the, the poison so supposedly in by Okay, the amount in by dalam hempedu tak banyak. It's not much poison supposed to be reside inside of uh, inside of the bile. Okay, but for example, the the the, the what we call the victim death after few days of exposure. Okay, so more amount of poison can be found in by dalam hempedu. Okay, right. Then the other thing is vitreous humor. Vitreous humor, vitreous humor, sorry, uh, is actually the liquid inside of our eye, our eyeball. Okay, they have liquid inside. Okay, the liquid inside of our ball is actually protected by our uh, eyeball skin. Okay, it's resist to decay. Okay, for example, after seventy two hours, okay, a lot of things have been dry inside of our body, including the blood. Okay, so the liquid inside of our eyeball okay, can be used to determine amount of toxicant, drugs or poison, whatever it is. Okay? So we can use that as well. Okay? For example, I give you this situation, the body is found after 72 hours. Which, what kind of the sample that you should collect, okay, you should consider. Okay? The best answer for that, okay, you need to use vitreous humor. Okay? All right, that is one of the example. Okay? Then the next one, hair. Hair absorbs heavy metals and provide timeline of ingestion. Okay, can determine if the poisoning was acute or drawn out chromic. Okay, if for example, okay, the death is acute, it means that you take the poison just today. Just today, you take the poison and you dead. You dead. Okay, so your hair supposedly doesn't have those poison. Okay, but let's say. Let's say you have been dealing with that particular poison. You ate the same chocolate. For example, chocolate in, in past 30, 40 years, chocolate contain lead, plumbum, okay? Contain lead or plumbum, okay? So after certain period of time, okay, because of the lead poisoning is accumulated in self body, it can cause death, okay? So out, out of, after the long exposure, okay, the lead can also be observed at our hair, okay? So we can collect the hair sample to see either the death is immediately or is actually due to the long time exposure. Okay. So let's say I give you a case of example, you would like to study either the, the, the death because of the uh, long time exposure or just uh, acute okay, cases. So you need to, you can choose hair, for example. Okay. Right. The sevens, we can collect insects. Okay, for sample testing. Okay, for example, after um, after four days, 
uh, after five days, okay, the corpse is actually consumed by maggot. Maksudnya mayat ada ulat yang makan. Maksudnya dah tak banyak, you tinggal ulat sahaja, maggot sahaja. Maggot sahaja yang you boleh collect. You can collect those insects, you can collect those maggots untuk ambil dan you test ada drug atau tidak. Kalau kata ada drugs, okay, selalunya maggot ni dia akan makan kulit, dia akan makan hati, dia akan makan darah. So the drugs also will get accumulated inside of the insects. Contohnya maggot, ulat. So you can use that insects to help you to determine either that is any involved of poison or drugs during the um, cases. Okay, so case. Okay, you can use that. Okay, let's say I give you an example. Okay, after five days, there is nothing left except of maggots. Okay, appear at the crime of scene, scene of crime. So what kind of sample that you should collect for the uh, analysis? So you need to suggest insects. Okay. Right. So is there any question for related to uh, the same sample? What kind of sample? How we choose it? Okay. Ada soalan? Ijen bertanya. Hmm, boleh boleh. Uh, saya Diana Ijen bertanya untuk hmm. uh, pengujian sampel. Misalnya kita gunakan sampel darah seperti yang tadi pertanyaannya Pak Dedi. Misalnya uh, racun yang dia gunakan itu sangat sedikit, tapi menyebabkan kematian dan kita uh, ambil sampelnya itu sampel darah. Apakah kita uh, punya spesifik treatment untuk sampel darahnya ini saat kita mau uh, uji karena konsentrasinya yang sedikit ataupun uh, kalau konsentrasinya besar apakah treatmentnya itu tidak diperluku, diperlukan sekian Pak terima kasih okay. alright okay uh, tadi pun dah ada yang tanya kan uh, nanti kita akan tengok pada we will we will look into sample preparation okay i will show you a few example of sample preparation that can help you to pre concentrate the uh, drugs or the poisons so we can uh, be able to detect it positively right diana right okay so right now we will learn about what is sample preparation okay right sample preparation is the sample pre treatment step or treatment step Okay, to bring the sample into the correct size or form for analysis. It means that if the sample is too diluted, we need to increase the concentration. The sample is solid. It cannot be used to inject okay, into the instrument. We need to dilute it. That is also the sample preparation. Okay? And sample preparation is also one of the most laborious time and error prone. Lah. So you need to be very, uh, you need to um, very careful while doing the sample preparation okay so most of the time for the entire analysis it will take us about 61 percent of the time for example about one hour so you need about 40 minutes to to do the sample preparation only for the analysis okay right so why sample preparation is required there are three things that we need to understand the first one is to, is to remove interference. Interference, okay? So interference is unwanted substances lah. Ya, macam ni kalau kita nampak ni sangat messy. Okay, sangat berserabut, sangat messy. It's too messy for us. So before the purification, okay, the we cannot determine which our analyte. Or maybe it's reduce our analyte sensitivity. But with the purification, it can reduce all the unwanted substances, foreign substances, remove all the interference, so we can get more clear picture of our analyte. So it will increase as well our sensitivity, accuracy, and also selectivity. So for example here, background is too huge. The background is too huge. Okay, So the detection limit will be lower. Why after the SPE we reduce the interference and background sensitivity, background uh, interference, and then we get a very good sensitivity. Then the second one, why why sample preparation is required is uh, we want to do the concentration adjustment. Okay, soalan Diana tadi, okay, 
adakah perlu ada juga soalan tadi macam uh, kalau kata sample pressure kalau kata sample itu sorry concentration terlalu banyak adakah perlu sample preparation yes we need to do the sample preparation if the concentration is too diluted terlalu sedikit kita boleh tambah kita boleh banyakkan okey kalau concentration dia terlalu banyak okey your 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 instrument will get error as well akan ada masalah untuk detection okay so you can lower it down to the right concentration okay so that's why i say it's actually both uh, it, it will work both way okay then the next one is the instrument cap, uh, compa compatibility right so for example your sample is in solid form your sample is solid form but instrument can be only used for liquid sample so by using the sample pressure you prepare it properly so it will it will not damage the instrument okay maybe sometimes the instrument cannot detect the compound cannot detect the substances you can derivatize the sample for example uh, it's not fluorescence under uv fluorescence Okay, you can put the derivative as a derivatizing agent, which is fluorescence, add to the chemical so you can it can be detected by the uh, instrument. Okay, so what is the best method to prepare your sample? What is the best method to prepare your sample by using the standard method? Okay, we have a number of standard method available, which is widely used by the Uh, any article library all over the world you can try to find that and then you can use that to your sample analysis okay why because commonly asked during trial in court okay the, the lawyer will ask okay did you use standard method okay did your standard method is workable okay did you use standard method if for example you say that you don't use standard method okay they will ask more Have you validated your method? How you know that your method is accurate or not? Because the standard method is the method that is acceptable by all the library all over the world. That's why it's highly encouraged to use the standard method. Okay, this is the example of standard methods. Okay, uh, for example here from the EPA method, Environmental Protection Agency, if I'm not mistaken, method for the analysis of paraqua in drinking water. Okay, so they use liquid solid extraction. Okay, I won't go into detail about this because we just want to know the idea how to prepare. So we have chat. Ah, okay, right. Okay, I will try to answer this first. Sorry, sir, my name is unstable. According to the manner of death, we know that in the human body, there may be small amount of cyanide, but how does the forensic team know that the victim was poisoned by cyanide? It could be that cyanide was detected in the victim, body, not the cause of death, whether by knowing how long the cyanide was already in the body. So there's a lot of things. That's why one of the role of forensic toxicologists okay, is to do the interpretation. Okay, to answer this kind of question, okay, we need to know, okay, is the amount Other than the, 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 the poison is detected, uh, we need to provide the interpretation. Is the amount available in the body can cause death or not? Okay. Then he need, you as the forensic toxicology need to determine if the amount of the body is due to acute, it means that immediate action of poison or it is because of the long time exposure. So we need to determine all of that. Okay. To help them. To answer this question, how does the forensic team know the victim poisoned by cyanide? Okay, that's why one rule of the forensic pathologist or the forensic toxicologist, they need to understand the symptom. Okay, for example, the symptom of the carbon monoxide poisoning, the symptom of the carbon monoxide poisoning, the skin will get some reddish, okay, become reddish. If, for example, it's due to cyanide, okay, the death because of cyanide, if I'm not mistaken, you can find by yourself, okay, If the amount of the cyanide, okay, uh, have huge amount instead of your blood, okay, the blood will become more reddish. So they need to know the characteristic. Okay, other than that, okay, that's why later in the uh, sample analysis method, you will learn about the screening method, okay, before you perform confirmatory method. In screening method, it will help you narrowing down into selective group of 
poison or specific amount of poison before they do the confirmatory analysis. Okay. I hope that I am answering your question, Maifa. Maifa? Is that answering your question, Maifa? The party. I'm not sure if she or he is still here. All right. Please interrupt me anytime. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you, Maifa. All right. Right, so last time, uh, previous slide, we learned about we need to suppose to use standard method. Can you use in-house method? In-house method is mean that you just create by yourself. Okay, it's highly discouraged to use in-house method unless you have strong justification. What is the strong justification? For example, there is no available standard method, for example. And then only you can use in-house method. But, but... If you use in-house method, you need to perform method validation. What is the method validation? You need to determine is the method stable. Okay, the first one. You need to determine is the method accurate. Right? Is it accurate or not? Is it the method is reliable or not? Okay, all these three things you need to understand. Okay, so you need to perform full method validation. Okay, so you need to... Uh, Avoid in-house method if you can. Okay, you need to use the standard method. If the standard method is not available, you can use the published method. Okay, from journals. Okay, then after that you can use the in-house method. Okay, but all those things you need to uh, analyze it accurately. Okay, so here is the example of the sample preparation method. Okay, the first one is chocolate extraction method. Okay. It's a preferred method when the solubility of analyte is low and its tendency resides inside of solid. For example, you have heart, you take liver, you take liver, okay. The analyte is what you call, it's very love to be inside of the liver, okay. It has low solubility to be extracted inside of the solvent. So by performing solid liquid extraction method, you can do the continuous extraction, okay. So you put your sample of, over here and then your solvent here, after you apply heating, will get evaporated and then condense, go back inside of the solid sample and then continuous process, process and then your analyte will get concentrated inside of this particular bottom flask. So it's allowed for continuous extraction and it's allowed for good pre-concentration of analyte. It means that it's good for us to extract as much as possible of your analyte if your sample is solid, okay? However, chocolate extraction method is time consuming, okay? It can take until days, okay, to finish the extraction. It, it's not really green, okay, because we use a lot of electricity for heating, water for condensing, and also, of course, you need to use a lot of chemicals, okay? That is solid extraction, uh, chocolate extraction method, okay? The other one is liquid liquid extraction method, also known as the solvent extraction and partitioning. Okay. The LLE separate the compound based on the solution preferences. For example, your, we have two particular liquid over here. Two immiscible liquid. Two immiscible liquid, liquid yang tak bercampur. Uh, cecair yang tidak bercampur. Contohnya macam Water and hexane. Water has polar characteristic. Hexane is non-polar characteristic. For example, here is water. Water is dense, so it will go to the bottom. Hexane is less denser, it will go to the top of the uh, this particular flask. Okay, right. So, for example, your analyte, it love the hexane, the phase two. Okay, it love the hexane. It prefer the hexane. It will go towards the phase two. Okay, that's how we can extract. Okay, for example, you want to pre-concentrate. Okay, phase one, your sample is in water or is in urine. You want to pre-concentrate. Okay, so for example, your sample is 250 ml. Okay, so 250 ml, for example, okay, I will put here, I will try to go into ocean pen. Okay, for example, the concentration inside of the water is 50 over 250 ml. So the concentration is 
50 over 250 how much if i'm not mistaken 0.2 if i'm not mistaken is that correct 0.2 ppm so it's maybe still lower okay so you so after performing the extraction here is 50 mil okay your analyte go towards here okay so 50 milligram over 50 mil so you get one ppm sorry one one ppm okay so one ppm versus 0 0.2 ppm so you increase the concentration by performing by performing the extraction process it will increase five folds over here for example over here that's why through the same preparation it will help you to increase the concentration from very small to manageable amount of concentration okay right so the requirement that for le okay the problem with that the sample must be uh, what we call dissolved in liquid right and then you still use a lot of chemical okay but you can perform it in very short period of time and actually the method is stable and still widely been used until today by many forensic laboratory okay right so here is the solid phase extraction method okay this is one of the best extraction method available okay and like okay they, they have four steps conditioning sample addition washing elution okay conditioning is that you prepare the solvent okay inside here we have the solvent solvent is mean that we have the particles to absorb your analyte okay then you add your sample okay so why you add your sample for example your sample is the red one okay your sample will be retained of course some of the interference will also be retained and then you can proceed with the washing process to remove the interference and then only that you can pre-concentrate okay for example your sample is for example in one liter for example you can add everything pre-concentrate over here and then you just elute it using one mil can you imagine from 200 your sample from 250 mil it's concentrated into one mil how many folds is concentrated Okay, for the extraction process. Of course, it's not as easy as I say, but that is a uh, theory, lah, theoretically, how it's actually applicable. In reality, it's very difficult as well, but it's how I can explain theoretically. Okay, right. So it's very good purification and pre-concentration method. However, it's only applicable to liquid sample. Your sample need to be diluted. The cartridge also non-reusable and not really cost-effective. Okay, so the catcher is not usable. Once you have used, you need to throw away and then it's not usable. Okay, not usable. You need to change. Okay, that's why uh, you need still to pay a lot of money. Okay, but still it's very effective in terms of purification and concentration. Okay, compare to this, the other, lah, the LLE and chocolate extraction. Okay, solid phase extraction is much more superior. Okay, right. Then the last extraction method that we will learn, okay, actually there are, there are hundreds of extraction methods. So I give you just only the example of the extraction method, okay. The, 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 the last one here today is the solid phase extraction method, micro, sorry, solid phase micro extraction method, okay. The best one about the SPME, okay, is solventless, almost solventless, okay. You require no solvent for extraction, okay, you can directly uh, extract from your sample okay so the principle based on the equilibrium uh, established okay among the concentration your analytes will absorb at the fiber okay so if we look at the device spme device is like a shrink macam shrink jarum okay but at the needle we have the fiber okay the fiber we can uh, turunkan we can lower it down so it can touch directly to the sample via direct immersion or there are second method which is we call head space head space mean that you just put the fiber above the sample okay this method is suitable only if your analyte is uh, volatile kalau analyte you tak volatile it's not applicable it's not what we call recommended to use head space better you go for direct immersion then you can injectly direct 
uh, 2D uh, instrument. So it's very good for the sample precursor filtration. And if you do it correctly, okay, it, it will be good as well for the sample purification. Okay, for example, heat space SPM is super, super good for the um, sample purification. Okay, but the problem with that, the SPME device requires expertise because the fiber is fragile and is quite expensive. If we change to USD dollars, okay, one fiber, it, it may co cost us uh, around two, 100 to 250 USD dollars one fiber, not including the syringe. The entire device, it may reach about 600 to 750 USD dollars okay, for one device. Okay, So if you use correctly the fiber, it can be usable up to 1,000 times of injection. Okay, If you are not doing it carefully, maybe after one uh, sampling process, your fiber will get broken. Okay, so that's why SPME is quite expensive. I have the device as well. Okay, so that is about sample preparation method. Uh, am I am, am the has the sample preparation method here answering your question, Diana? Okay. Is it okay, Diana? Yeah, Pak, sudah menjawab. Makasih, Pak. All right, that's good. Okay, so now let's do on the, I believe it's about the last part, not really the last part lah, okay. But the last part is analysis your sample, okay. In analysis the sample, okay, there are two methods, okay, which is the screening method and also the confirmatory method, okay. Now let's look first on the screening method. Why we need to perform the screening method, okay. Okay, screening method also known as the presumptive test. It means that you just assume. It's not confirmatory. It means that, okay, uh, the drug is there, but you may not know the specific type of drug. Okay. For example, the presumptive test, you know, okay, there is some metabolites or maybe the group of uh, morphine, for example, but you don't know exactly what kind of morphine. Or maybe you uh, just assume, okay, it falls under uh, maybe it's paraquat uh, or maybe diquat kind of pesticide, but you are not really confirmed which one. Okay, but you can know that oh, there is pesticide over there. Okay, so you can assume. So that's why it's also known as the presumptive test. So mean that we assume it's there or not. Okay, okay. So it's commonly utilized color observation. Okay, if you look over here, most of the time we utilize color observation, color test. Spot test, TLC, immunoassay. If you look over here, it's true color observation. If not for the color observation, for example, TLC, you can use, uh, put the TLC under the UV light. Okay, why the screening method is advantageous? It can reduce cost for confirmatory analysis. Okay, so by using the presumptive test, you can narrow down to what kind of the poison. Okay you want to detect. For example, after certain screening tests, or you know that it falls under uh, heavy metals, for example. It's not under a uh, hydrocarbon type or organic compound of poison. So it can help you to reduce cost for confirmatory analysis. Because if you want to use confirmatory analysis, you need to use high-end instrument, which is, high, uh, which is expensive. So screening method is actually cheap. It's kind of cheap. Per analysis is less than 10 ringgit. Oh, sorry. Less than $5. Okay. But if you go for confirmatory analysis, it may reach to $50 to $100 per analysis. Okay. So it reduces the cost. And then it tailor as well the correct sample preparation. So you won't, uh, what we call, waste okay, a lot of chemical okay, to do the right sample preparation. So it's narrowed down to a group or to a, to a group of uh, pesticide or poisons, okay? However, the screening method also have some disadvantages, including it can also give false positive and negative. Okay, I'll give you an example over here from my experience. Okay, uh, later we will learn about in the explosive analysis. 
Okay. In the explosive analysis, for example, some explosive will produce the red color if you react with the grease reagent. Okay. But if, for example, the uh, from the cleaning cleaning material like uh, Clorox or detergent, bleach, bleach and detergent will also will also what we call produce the same result. So it can give us the false positive. Okay, that's the one example. Then the second one is low detection limit. Okay, usually the screening methods only workable, only workable if the concentration of your chemical or sample is high. At low concentration, it might not get detected. That is when the screening method cannot be used. Okay. The third one, not forensically defensible without confirmation. Okay. So when you add the court, if you just mention to the court that you are only perform the screening method, your testimony will not get will not get accepted because you cannot determine either the amount, the concentration uh, is actually cause harm to the victim. You cannot confirm exactly what kind of the compound okay, actually cause harm to the victim. Okay, that is about screening method. Okay. So we have number of screening method. We have the color test or spot test. A reagent is added to substances and because of the chemical reaction, because of the chemical reaction, okay, you get the color observation. You get the color change. Okay, All right. So for the then you have the immunoassays. Okay, immunoassays widely been used nowadays in any analytical library for the uh, for the screening purposes. Okay, it's utilized antigen antibody reaction because the reaction is very specific. It can help us to determine very specific group or very specific individual. Okay, right. But the problem with the immunoassays, uh, it's cannot give you definitely sometimes lah. Sometimes it cannot give you definitely the the, the concentration. Okay, right. The third one year example is the TLC analysis. Okay, TLC is the chromatography separation, but not high-end chromatography, just the classical chromatography. So based on, uh, based on the polarity, you can spot, uh, sorry, you can observe the color by spraying the chemical reagent or you can put the TLC plate under the UV light, okay, to see the color change lah, or color observation. Okay, that is for screening method. Okay, is there any question? The important thing about screening method is you want to understand where it can be used or where it cannot be used. What is disadvantages, uh, what is the advantages, okay? How it can be utilized to help forensic investigation, okay? Or analysis of chemical, okay? Is there any question? Let me check, let me check the chat room. There is no question yet in the chat room. Kalau tak ada soalan, saya teruskan. Belum ada Pak. Ah, ibu, ya. Siapa tu? Boleh 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 tanya. Belum ada. Okey, belum ada. Okey. Alright, so we proceed in the analysis the sample after other than screening method we can perform confirmatory method. What is the confirmatory method? Confirmatory method is the method which can identify, okay? The compound or uh, the compound specifically okay and also it can provide a very sensitive detection okay so it means that we can sure that the presence of the compound so that's why the confirmatory method is more sensitive and specific okay in the screening maybe you might not be able to, for example lah, i give you example of pesticide is paraquat and diquat from the screening, both of them show the same color observation, but you cannot determine is, is it paraquat or diquat type of pesticide. But using this, uh, the confirmatory method, you can determine what, what kind of the poison. Okay, so it's great for qualitative, what kind of substances and quanti quantitative analysis, how much actually is present. Okay, so forensically, it's defensible. Okay, usually it's been utilized in all over the world. Okay, ability to analyze multiple substances at once. Okay, so you need you can determine multiple compound or multiple poisons, multiple 
uh, element at once. Okay. However, the analysis can become expensive. The operation of instrument can be intensive and may require expertise. Okay. Instrument mahal eh? boleh jadi if uh, I change to uh, in USD dollar lah. In USD dollar, GCMS is around hundred thousand USD dollar. The normal GCMS. If GCMMMS uh, quadruple, triple quadruple, it can reach to about two hundred fifty thousand USD. The simple HPLC, it may reach about fifty thousand USD dollars. Okay, so that's how expensive it. That is for instrument. For the per analysis, it can reach about fifty USD dollar up to. 100 to 300 USD dollars. Okay. Right. That's how expensive it is for confirmatory method. That's why cost screening method is quite helpful. Lah. Okay. Quite helpful. So for the confirmatory method analysis, okay, why it can help you? Okay. Because for the confirmatory methods, it can help you to separate. Okay. From a single sample, you have multiple compounds inside that. Okay. You can separate them. So you can detect them at uh, multiple uh, at once lah together. Okay, so for example here, malatanya and chlorpyrifos is the pesticide. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Chlorpyrif malatanya is pesticide. Chlorpyrifos, I'm not really sure. Okay, maybe pesticide as well. Okay, so it is a work of my student. Okay, so it can help you to determine. Okay, the of course lah, you have separate them. It will help you for detection lah, and then you it can help you for the quantification here is the calibration curve okay if you look over here it may lower than 0. Point, lower than 1 ppm this means that it's reach ppb level it reach the ppb level okay so it's mean that the 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 detection limit is very good for the confirmatory analysis okay right so here here is the Example of the instrumentation method for the confirmatory analysis that I need you guys to understand and probably remember <laughs> if you want to survive during the examination. All right. So don't worry, it's not that much. Okay. We have here gas or liquid chromatography. Okay. Right. Gas is for gas uh, volatile compound. Okay. If for example the compound is organic. Okay. Organic compound. Okay. You can use gas or liquid chromatography. If the compound is not volatile, okay, I, I stress over here, if the compound is not volatile, okay, you never use gas chromatography. It will damage the system, okay? So you only use gas chromatography if your analyte is volatile under certain amount of uh, temperature. For example, GC, usually we use up to range up to 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, if your analyte boiling point is higher than 300 degrees Celsius boiling point, you cannot use gas chromatography. You need to use liquid chromatography. So, it separates organic compounds according to chemical properties. For example, in gas chromatography, uh, the boiling point and also polarity will give the effect on the separation. Okay, if you use liquid chromatography most of the time, uh, is affected by the polarity. Okay, so it can be used to separate a large meat sample for further analysis, suitable for almost organic drugs and poison, lah. poison such as paraquat, DDT, etc. Later during the explosive analysis, I will show you how my project during my PhD, uh, I'll be able to separate about 13 explosive during liquid chromatography. That's how actually large meat of sample that we can separate. Okay. Okay. The next one is atomic spectroscopy. Okay. Atomic, atomic spectroscopy good for the elemental analysis. Okay. Gas liquid chromatography is good for the uh, organic compound. Okay. Maybe I would like to ask over here. Lah. Okay. I would like to ask over here. Maybe who do we have? Maybe Nikita, do we have Nikita? Nikita? Okay, what is the differences between organic compound and also heavy metal? Okay. 
Can you repeat please? Okay. Can you try to give the example? Okay, you give the example of organic compound and also the example of heavy metals. How they difference? Okay, it's it's not the, it's not that clear. Maybe you can write in the chat box. Maybe you can write in the chat I'm box. I'm sorry, so okay. I, I think better I turn off my camera. I already turn off my camera. <laughs> okay. Uh probably you can write in the chat box. Hmm. Or maybe some other friends want to try to help her. Okay, you can write the chat box as well. What is the difference between organic compound and also the, for example, heavy metals? Mm -hmm. Ada yang mau mencuba? Because this is very important. Eh? Let's say you deal with the uh, poisons. Okay, you sus you suspected to a group of poisons. Okay, so you need to determine a suitable uh, analytical method. Okay, why is okay? Uh, maybe you can try to write in the chat box. I will try to explain over here. All right, organic compound is made of hydrocarbon and also certain element. Okay, for example, uh, the paraquat, or maybe if, okay. for example, here, for example, here. Here, 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 here. Oh, oh, oh. For example, here, here is be considered as the organic compound. Okay, it made up of carbon, hydrogen, and certain element, other element, nitrogen. Okay, that is what we call as the um, organic compound. Okay, if for example, it's just arsenic. Okay, for example, AS or here, mercury. Mercury, if you're not mistaken, HG, if you're not mistaken. Alien, I'm not sure. Let, for example, plumbum. Okay, element. Okay, that is what we call. If there is, for example, here as HGPB, there is no, there is no uh, carbon or H. Okay, no carbon or H. So hydrogen. So we consider that as the elemental or heavy metals. Okay, right. That's how we can differentiate them. Okay. So here. Okay, if let's say, for example, you found plumbum, okay, or you found, for example, arsenic, so you need to use atomic spectroscopy. You cannot use gas or liquid chromatography, okay? Is that understood? Yes, it's not. Yes, it's not. All right, thank you, Nikita. All right, so the next one is the mass spectrometry. The last one, okay, this is the most, the most famous one, lah, the most famous instrumental method for the uh, analysis of any kind of compound, either it's element or either it's compound, okay. So, best spectrometry is high energy bombards the compound. The compound, okay, it bombards into uh, several spectrum, okay, for example, this compound, produce several fragments, okay? I, I cannot teach you into detail because it will take some time. So it will, uh, what we call, bombard into several fragments. Okay, these several fragments, if you done it prop, uh, correctly, you can determine the structure of the compound, okay? You can determine the structure of the compound. If the compound is unknown, okay? If the compound is unknown, if you have sample that is, you contain unknown sample, okay? So you can use mass spectrometry, why? Because you can use the spectrum, 
Okay, okay. Usually the mass spectrometry they come they comes with library. Okay, you can try to match with the library to identify the compound. Okay, so that's how it's work. Okay, so here your sample the compound will go through here. Okay, then ionization source will bombard the compound into fragments. Okay, those fragments okay based on the molecular weight of the compound. Okay, if you done it correctly, you can restructure back and to determine the compound. Okay, so you can use the spectrum to identify the compound from the available spectrum in the library. Okay, both elemental and organic compounds actually can be utilized, uh, can be detected, okay, using mass spectrometry. In the, if I look over here, sorry, okay. Okay, in gas chromatography, we have gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Liquid chromatography, we, we can have liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. In atomic spectroscopy, we have the ICPMF, inductive club, couple plasma mass spectrometry. Okay, so they can actually hyphenate it. Hyphenate it means that you can combine with this particular instrument to detect your sample. Okay, the best about mass spectrometry you can detect unknown compound. Let's say I give you situation, you detect unknown compound. Uh, you have unknown compound you want to detect. Okay, so how you can do that? You can use mass spectrometry. Okay, right. It's highly selective, sensitive and selective. Okay, suitable for trace analysis. Okay, this is one also most important element. Okay, because of it's highly selective because it can detect, okay, very individual of the compound. It can enhance, okay, it can enhance the sensitivity. Okay, I don't have much time to, to show you how it actually works to remove all the impurities. Okay, but you can what we call specifically select the mass to molecular ratio ion, okay, to detect to a specific compound. Okay, that's why it can be highly sensitive. Okay, I cannot show you right now, but you need to understand that it's highly sensitive. Okay. However, the instrument is uh, highly expensive. It can reach about less, uh, more than 250,000 USD. Okay, you can convert uh, to rupiah. I'm not really sure how to do that. Okay, but it's quite expensive. Per analysis, it can reach about uh, 80 to 100 USD per sample. Okay, so that's all for today. Is there any question before we doing our activity? I Mm -hmm. uh, terkait yang urin tadi kan urin itu kan tadi kan mudah diperoleh tapi urin tidak dapat melihat apa so, apakah suatu obat memberikan efek pada saat dikumpulkan itu maksudnya bagaimana ya Pak? karena kan biasanya kalau misalkan kita mau mendeteksi orang yang narkoba kan biasanya melalui urin kan itu kan juga Obatnya itu kan pasti memberikan efek nafsi seperti itu. Nah, kalau di kasus yang sekarang ini, itu bagaimana ya Pak terkait sampel urin tersebut? Sampel urin? Iya. Oke, okay, uh, saya tak dapat dengar dengan jelas. Boleh boleh type tak dalam chat box? Maaf ya, sebab saya tak dapat dengar dengan jelas. Mungkin sebab pakai masker bergema. Maaf. Saya ingin bertanya, Pak, apakah sudah jelas? Hmm, dengar, jelas, jelas. Nah, uh, kan, sedikit sampel, kan, kan mudah diperoleh lah salah satunya, Pak, keuntungan uh, dari sampel tersebut. Kan urin, urin kan tidak dapat menentukan apakah suatu obat memberikan efek apapun pada sisi kita. Tapi kan dalam kasus misalkan kita mau apa mengidentifikasi apakah orang itu narkoba atau tidak kan pasti melalui uh, urin kan pak kan ur uh, nah kalau narkoba kan pasti mengkonsumsi obat nah obatnya kan pasti memberikan efek 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 yang sering apply gitu gitu nah dalam kasus forensik ini bagaimana ya pak terkait urin tersebut sampel urin oke okay. alright alright uh, I believe you refer to the slide Let me share back my screen. Mm, 
Okay. Urine can determine whether during drug was exerting at any, at any effect at time it was collected. Okay. Okay. Urine, air kencing. I'm not sure. Urine lah. Urine lah. Okay. Because the amount of the drug in urine can last until certain period of time. Maybe after three days. Okay. For example, in case of Li Chong Wei, you guys know Li Chong Wei? At, uh, sometimes he need he was terminated from uh, attending any badminton championship because of the certain drugs. Okay. The supplement was taken few days before. Okay. But at that time, okay, there is no any effect at the time it was collected. Dia cergas, dia tak mabuk, everything tak ada. Okay. So, that's why urine can show us there is drug but it will not show any effect. Okay. But blood, usually it will retain for a short period of time. After certain time, it will just go to your tissue, you go to urine. Okay. So, it will be excreted. Okay. So, that is how it's actually why urine. Okay. It can show you there is a drug. Okay. But it's not necessarily that you show any effect of drug during that time. Okay. Because it may come, the drugs you may consume few days before. Okay. Right. Is that answering your question? Maybe, maybe I got confused with your question. Jelas, Pak Asli. Jadi, uh, hmm. misalkan kita kan mengusir obat, terus beberapa hari, itu kan berarti, um, apa ya, kandungnya, apa? pas ngetes urinnya itu berarti tidak, tidak, apa ya, tidak ada ya. lagi itu, apa namanya? Hmm. Ya, Kalau, ya, kan, ya. macam case Lee Chong Wei, even though he, he claimed that, he claimed the Lee Chong Wei, he claimed that, he didn't consume the drug on the day of the event but he still got sentenced maksud dia masih tidak boleh menyertai pertandingan kerana dadah itu ada so selagi dadah itu ada that amount dia masih lagi banyak maksudnya dia masih lagi bersalah walaupun selepas beberapa hari hmm. baik pak hmm okey ada soalan lain? It's a very good question actually. Very good question. Uh, I want to ask to her. Alright, proceed. If it's okay, I ask the uh, same thing about sample testing. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, about a fetus humor, it, uh, the example is uh, able water, yes sir. Uh, I want to ask what case we can use able water. Is it can determine poisons uh, too? Um, and uh, for sample preparation, I think uh, able water is not um, a large amount of sample. Is it uh, can be determined if it's uh, we use small amount of samples? All right. Okay. In okay. Uh, I believe she referred to she referred to sample, 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 sample. Vitreous humor, a uh, vitreous humor. Okay, so vitreous humor is eyeball water. It means that inside of our ball we have uh, some liquid. It's not really water lah. Eyeball liquid. I I prefer to use liquid because it's not it's not as uh. It's not as not denser as water. It's very dense actually, the liquid inside. Okay, right. So, uh, because of the amount, it's not that much. Okay, because of the amount, it's not that, that much. We, as the, uh, what we call, the forensic analyst, okay, forensic toxicologist, if you ask the forensic toxicologist, you need to be very careful. And then you need to choose a wise instrument. Okay, for example, Okay, the best instrument to deal with it, I, I suggest we use the mass spectrometry because the amount is so little and then we maybe it trace amount. It is in trace amount. So we use mass spectrometry. Why? Because mass spectrometry, okay, you can mat, uh, analyze multiple elements at the same time. It can help us determine unknown compound 
and it can also help us for uh, trace analysis. Okay, is that answering your sample uh, uh, the question? Yes, sir. Um, uh, uh, is it can determine poison or else for a criminal case? Sir? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can use that as well. Uh, hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So uh, if you read, you try to read, uh, for example, I think last few years, uh, I go to the Semarang. Okay. So they ask us uh, how they can detect, for example, methanol inside of the drinking. Because some of the person, some group of person, they consume alcohol, but they, what we call, pass away because they have methanol inside of the alcohol. In our normal alcohol, Okay, in our normal alcohol, it just contain ethanol. Ethanol is not that toxic. Okay, but methanol at small amount it can cause death. Okay, but the problem with the methanol is easily, easily change into something else. Uh, so where can we collect the sample effectively? Based on our reading, we can use vitreous humor. Okay, because uh, there is actually protected by a lot of other things. Okay, by bacteria, for example, volatilization, for example, lots of other factors. Okay, I hope that answering your question. Is there any other question? Very good. It's very interactive. I love okay, this kind of session. Okay. If not, uh, let's go for some activity. Okay. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, you can scan the QR code to join the game. You can scan the QR code to join the game. Okay, kita tunggu sebentar lagi. Right, we have seven. Maybe we should start. Okay, let's begin. The amount of poison cause you to vomit and have stomach ache. <coughs> what is the level of toxicity? You could indicate. Is it little or toxic? Okay. It is toxic. Okay. If the amount of the poison cause death, then it is Leader. Okay. All right. Okay. Congrats, Sati. Next question. You suspected either cyanide or strychnine, uh, stichanine, stichanine cause the food poisoning. Which kind of instrument you would choose? Yeah. Okay, good. 
you should choose mass spectrometry because atomic spectroscopy is preferable for elemental analysis. Mm, right, good job. Next. Safety is still number one. Right, the poisons were administered through infra, infra, sorry, intravenously method, which sample you should collect. Is it stomach content or blood? IV right. method. Okay, the you're supposed to collect blood if there's poison administered through the IV method. So supposedly we have more poisons inside of our blood compared to the stomach. All right. Good job. Wow, Riska becoming a number one. All right. Next. What is the suitable sample preparation for analytes with low solubility? The keywords here is low solubility. Okay. The sample preparation for analyte with the low solubility is chocolate extraction method because it's a continuous extraction method which can help to pre-concentrate the sample okay All right liquid liquid extraction if the analyte is low uh, solubility okay towards those extraction sample it won't get extracted better so you need to use continuous extraction method such as chocolate okay or if for example uh, you want to choose SPE, okay? Because it's get absorbed by the absorbent, okay? It can also it can also be used, okay? But not liquid liquid extraction, okay? Okay, safety got number one. You okay? The last question. You encountered a case to detect lead poisoning. Which instrument would you choose? Okay. Lead poisoning, plumbum. Wow, that's amazing. All of you got it correctly, right? So congratulations. Okay, that's all for today class. Okay, is there any other question from you guys? Uh, Dr. Yanwadi, are you here? Okay, it's okay. Next time we will play another kind of quiz, right? All right, if there is nothing more from the students, okay, uh, we will meet again. I'm not really sure when. I will check my schedule, but I think until fingerprint analysis and also explosive analysis. Okay, all right, that's all for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Kalau ada soalan, saya, saya tunggulah. Saya akan cuba jawab. Yang lain ada soalan ke? Masih ada soalan daripada mahasiswa? 
Tengok ramai lagi ni Dina okey Rizka okey Kelas sudah selesai eh Kalau kita sudah boleh bersurai lah Terima kasih Pak Terima kasih Izin ni Pak Boleh boleh Terima kasih Pak Selamat sore Selamat sore Terima kasih Pak. Terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih Fakultas Sains Teknologi. Saya berundur dulu. Thank you.